Hello everyone, welcome to another Flash Building video tutorial series. And this is going to be just a very short series. This is part one. There might be two parts or three parts, I'm not sure yet. But there'll definitely be more than one part. We're going to show how to make a dress up application within Flash using ActionScript 3. So you can be using Flash CS3 for this, Flash CS4, Flash CS5, or 5.5. We're going to work with ActionScript 3. And we're going to show how when the user clicks any of the garments, on stage or in the window that garment is automatically placed onto the doll at the correct position that it needs to be at the correct size and any previous garments for that category let's say if the doll was already wearing a shirt here and we click another shirt we want to take the shirt he's wearing off and put the new one on so we're going to show that logic in flash and uh, and man, that's not all we're going to show how to have multiple windows so you can have a shirt's window pane pants window pane, hats window pane, and footwear just by having buttons up here. Or maybe you have multiple shirts. You maybe have like 87 shirts. You can have shirts 1, shirts 2, shirts 3 button. You know what I'm saying? And you can have any kind of menu system you need for showing these categories of garments. Okay, I'm working in Flash Professional CS5 and I'm going to create a new ActionScript 3 file. I'm going to set my stage size to let's say 900 wide 600 high. I'm going to make my background black. My frame rate 30. Okay. Now let's double click this and name it background elements. And this is where you're going to draw any background elements as things that are never going to really change on the scene. Yeah, let me click this so I can get more room here. Oh, I need to open that again so I can give this a roundness, a little bit of roundness there. Now I can close that again. Okay, so that's what the doll will sit on top of. Now let's create another layer and let's name that one doll. Now let's go into Fireworks or whatever program you're working in. Maybe you're in Photoshop and you want to import assets from Photoshop. You can just go to File, Import, to Stage or the Library, any assets you want. But I'm, since I'm working in Fireworks, I'm just going to bring my assets straight in from Fireworks because it's handy like that. So I'm just going to take this doll, which is made up of a whole bunch of little pieces I drew. And none of them have any filter effects, so it'll look pretty much just like that when I bring it back in. And it'll still be a native shape. It'll all have these native shapes that I can edit still within Flash. And they won't pixelate and things like that. But if you're using photos of things and you need to have them cut out. You can cut them out in Fireworks, you can cut them out in Illustrator, or you can cut them out in uh, Photoshop and then import those assets into Photoshop. So I'm going to press Control C and once in Flash on the doll layer I'm going to press Control V and that's going to import and I'm going to keep all paths editable for mine. For yours if you have photo type cutout things you want to import as bitmaps so they maintain appearance. And actually mine is not going to be resized or anything like that, so I could import this as bitmaps if I want, but I'm going to keep all paths editable. So you see that? Now if I double click on that, you'll see I have all of my objects there. If I open this up, you'll see that that's a drawing object. So it's a native shape in Flash that I can animate or whatever. So it's really handy to know that kind of, you can bring that kind of stuff straight in from Fireworks and other Adobe products. Okay, I'm going to lock the doll layer so I don't accidentally pull anything there. Then I'm going to highlight the background elements layer. I'm going to draw out a rectangle primitive and I'm going to make a simple button. And with my rectangle drawn, I'm going to right click it, convert that to symbol. That's going to be a button type symbol. OK. And I'm going to give it an instance name of shirts. Let's call it shirts1. And I can go inside of that button and give it an overstate by pressing F6 on this keyframe and F6 on this keyframe to make new keyframes. And then give it a different color. Just make it turn white. Whatever you want to do. Alright, so now you have a simple button there. I'm going to duplicate that, let's say, three times. Control C, Control Shift, V. Slide it over. And highlight those two. Control C, Control Shift, V. Slide those over too. And you can also be bringing these buttons in just like the doll was brought in from Fireworks. You can bring in your buttons from Fireworks, Photoshop, or whatever you want. I just prefer to draw mine in Flash. Now let's grab some text. 
put it on that button. Make sure we have classic text, static. This one says shirts. Shirts 1. And let's make that black so we can see it. And that's just going to be a label for that button. Make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to do the same thing for these other three. And you can see I'm not putting my text fields inside the actual button symbol in its inner timeline, which you can choose to do if you like. I'm just having some text right on top, just for this simple demonstration. Okay, so this button is instance name shirts1. Let's make this one pants1. And really, the label that you put on them with the text, it doesn't really matter. The instance name does. So this one will be hats1. Oops. Hats1. And this one, footwear1. Alright, so now we have all of our buttons ready to go with instance names on them. Now the reason why we're putting buttons there and giving them instance names is because in a moment we're going to have several windows that we're going to create. One to hold the shirts, the pants, the hats, and the footwear. Each individual little windows. And when these buttons are pressed, it's going to be bring that window to the top. Or you can have all of your windows sitting off stage here and when those buttons are pressed for the corresponding window just make its X location be over here so you can choose to do it several different ways uh, and I'll think for a second which way I want to do it alright I'm gonna draw another simple rounded rectangle to be the background for the shirts selections okay so there's my window where I'm gonna place some shirts and let me go ahead and save this file before I get too far and let's press control enter and see what we have so far see just simple buttons now there's always four or five different ways to skin a cat in flash and I'm just gonna show you one method that I just happen to think is the very simplest method to use but apart from using the method I'm going to show you you can choose to pull things dynamically out of the library but what I'm going to show you how to do is dynamically change the elements within a movie clip to change the garments. Rather than pull them out from the library, we're going to structure out a movie clip that's going to have all of the shirts in it. Another movie clip is going to have all of the pants. Another movie clip will have all of the hats, etc., etc. Okay, so that's the method I'm going to show you. And like I said, if you want to be a super dorky expert, you can put all of your... Uh, movie clip garments into the library in Flash, export them for ActionScript, and then call them when needed. It's a very simple thing to do to export an element in your library for ActionScript and then script them out from the library when needed. And I have tutorials on that, but we don't want to overcomplicate things, do we? Why don't we keep things simple? If it can be made simple, let's make it simple. Okay, so I'm one for I'm one for having very complex code and doing things the ultra geeky way, but I'm also one for getting a job done, getting a project finished, and getting paid. Okay, now I'm going to go back into Fireworks, or if you're in Photoshop or whatever, or if you're in Flash and you wanted to just import any graphics for shirts or whatever, any garments, you can just import them to the stage now. But I'm going to take mine from Fireworks here. You can see it's at the exact size it needs to be for my doll. I'm going to press Control c and then back in Flash, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call that dynamic garments clips and I'm gonna paste that new element control V to that layer I'm gonna keep all my paths editable if you have pictures you wanna import as bitmaps okay okay so there's my first shirt and what I'm gonna do is put that directly on the doll where it should go and let me open up this so you can see the properties panel and everything now let's highlight that movie clip that we placed exactly where it needs to go on the avatar or on the doll and let's check out its coordinates let's make those even coordinates I don't like those decimal coordinates and my doll is on even coordinates as well let's bring that right about there that looks good now if you double click inside of that you'll see that you have a drawing object or you would have maybe a bitmap image in there alright so there's the doll there's your dynamic clip garments with the shirt on it on that layer we're gonna right click that convert to symbol and I'm just making this in contained into another movie clip I'm gonna call this shirts in the library it has a registration of top left point and make sure that's not a button but a movie clip press OK 
Now let's give it an instance name of shirts. Now I'm showing you this method that way when you double click inside this is still a movie clip and it's not that drawing object like it was. Because inside of this now we're going to bring in all the shirts and we're going to put each one on a frame and then we'll have frame labels under it. So let's put a new layer here and let's call this labels. Or you can have the labels on top it doesn't matter. And let's call this shirt movie clips. Shirt clips. And these are going to be imported movie clips that you import to each one of these frames. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now if you're using say uh, native shapes like I am you really wouldn't have to import anything else. I could pretty much change the color of this native shape here within Flash and then just put a green one, whatever colors I want in these different layers. But most people would be using maybe garments that they clipped out and marqueed out of Photoshop or fireworks or something like that. But keep in mind if you're using raw native shapes like I am here, these can just be placed, the drawing objects can be placed within these frames here and you don't have to bring in different movie clips. But as you can see in fireworks here I have tank tops. So I'm going to have to definitely bring in the tank tops. But we'll set it up like these were all like cut out photos of garments and things like that that you would bring in from Photoshop or fireworks. Now the shirt needs to go in the shirt clips layer so let's press control X and let's put it on the shirt clips layer control shift V actually let's make a new keyframe on frame 2 and let's pop that black shirt right there because on frame 1 you want your guy to be naked or whatever the default garment is when the application loads for the person who's going to play dress up you put that default item here in my case it's going to be a naked little doll or avatar sitting there and then they can proceed to dress him with the clothes so my frame one is going to be empty there so let's go ahead and make one more layer actually and let's call this AS3 and we're going to put a stop action on this layer so this little movie clip doesn't loop through all its frames on its own we want to control the frames so it'll stop frame one and not proceed down through any of these other frames until we direct it to. That's how it's all going to work. And let me show you how we're going to set up the frame labels now. You can go to labels keyframe 1 and you can type in default. So now if you extend that out you can say you can see that says default as a frame label there. Now let's press control I'm sorry press F6 and make a new keyframe on frame 2 and let's call this black your different type of shirts, you know, tank top, whatever. Actually, we'll have to name this Black T. Black T. And then you can put a blue T. And then when I bring my tank tops, I'll name it like Black Tank, Blue Tank, Red Tank. So you want to have them all different names for each different shirt. Now I'll just show you how to add the second one. So let's make a keyframe here. And really, you don't want that movie clip there. You can press Control x and let's bring in the next shirt from fireworks all right let's press control c in fireworks and back in flash right there on this keyframe control v okay and i'm going to pop that right where it needs to go to meet up with the crosshair in top left corner and there you have it 219 and 304 so that way when the person might select the green t-shirt to go up it'll go from whatever it is by default or maybe it's on the black shirt it'll go from that to the green shirt and that'll be like effectively removing the one that was on before it and going to the next selection so right here you just press F6 and you make this one say green T I'm gonna repeat that process for all of the shirts that I have okay so you see what I have inside of my shirts movie clip is stop action on frame 1 on the AS3 layer then I have the shirts clip layer which has the black shirt the green shirt and the blue shirt and those are black T you can see the frame label for that keyframe corresponding to what shirt name it is so this one's blue T for that frame label this one's green T and this one's black T and this one was default remember now what's gonna happen is when we actually put these shirts out in this white area here we're going to make it to where when the user clicks that shirt, 
we direct this inner timeline of this movie clip to actually put that shirt on the doll. Okay? So let's go double click over here in the gray, or you can just click on scene one here. And now we're back. And you'll notice that you if you have no default garment, like your doll is naked like mine, you will not have actually you can stick a little handle in here if you want. So you can make another layer and name it handle. This is a little trick for you guys that if you happen to not have things on frame one but you still want to see it on stage you can make a handle and just make it a little rectangle or something and put it off stage see now on my handles layer that's on frame one so I'll always see that off to the side there so I can click to get into my shirts movie clip anytime I want now let's just lock that handle layer let's go back into scene one you can see you can't see your shirts at all but you can still see this and get to it easily. Oh yeah, let me show you one more thing in case you didn't catch on to it. We're going to add one more here. So let's put a keyframe there, keyframe there, and let's label this black tank. That'll be a black tank top there. And since those tank tops are a different width, they're a different size than the shirts, I'll show you how to put those in the correct place. Let's extend that out. Extend that out by pressing F5, eh, which is really not necessary, but I like to keep all those even. Now in this layer, let's remove that and get the black tee or the black tank top and put it there. Okay, pasting from fireworks again. And what I want to do is put that into the correct position. And it doesn't have to be at the same coordinates as the others where the top left corner is at the top left corner of this crosshair. You just put it on the doll exactly where it looks like it should go. All right, there you go. So you can see it's at a different coordinates, but all you have to do is eyeball it and put it where it needs to go. That's why this is the simplest way to get this done. So you can see this one says black tank as its frame label, and there's a black tank top on it. It's pretty gay looking, actually. But that's okay. It's all fine. Okay, now we go back to the main scene. Let's do the same thing for the pants. Let's import some pants now. Okay, so to the dynamic garments layer, I'm going to import the first set of pants. I'm going to place them where they should go onto the doll. Make sure their coordinates are even, because I like even coordinates. That's good. Now let's do the same thing. Convert to symbol. In the library, let's call it pants. Registration top left, movie clip. Okay. Now I'll give it an instance name of pants, just like we did for the shirts movie clip here. This one has a movie clip or an instance name now of pants. We're going to do the same exact thing that I did for the shirts movie clip. I'm even going to give it a handle and everything inside of this pants movie clip here. And I shouldn't have to repeat that process because you guys watched carefully and you know exactly what to do now for the pants, the hats, and any footwear. So I'm not going to waste your time by repeating those steps. Okay, so now you see how to structure out those movie clips to keep things really simple. So we'll pick up in part two where I show you how to make these buttons enabled to bring in different windows of garments. For instance, shirts, pants, hats, etc. And then once those windows are showing up for us, we'll show you how when the items within those windows are clicked, it changes the shirts movie clip and pants movie clip to the corresponding garment that it should. That'll be in part two. And maybe there'll be two, maybe three videos in this series. Yeah, I might be able to knock it all out in the second video. But I, I think most of you guys have a grasp on where I'm going with this and how I'm going to structure it out and set it up. And you can almost go on your own and try and get it going. But I'm going to make the second video anyway.